I'll tell you what's gotten a lot of attention over these last couple weeks uh, is oil, price of gas. Anybody that's gone to fill their car lately knows what it's cost and how it's gone up. Keith Schaefer's with us right now, editor, publisher of Oil and Gas Investments Bulletin. Keith, thanks for being coming back and being with us. Um, the website is oilandgas-investments.com. All right, so we had a little bit of a pullback today. You know, this notion that the global economy is slowing down is okay for today, but I'm not sure if it's true, you know, in reality. Where, where is the price of oil going? Right now, Tracy, I think we're going to have a bit of a pause, which is very welcome. We've had a great run in the last two and a half months, and oil has kind of gone up to that very nervous mark of $125 a barrel on the international side and about $105 here domestically. But that $125 a barrel number is a very serious number because what happens is after that, above that, the world starts to price in recession almost everywhere. So the world thinks that oil up to $125 a barrel is great news, it must be a buoyant economy, but over $125 a barrel? Apparently it's not very The world good. starts to look forward a little right bit now, more and say, wow, a that's going to be recession going to really start to see are going to uh, another move up potentially as, as the summer driving season starts. I think, Keith, we're having a little trouble with your sound. Uh, all right, so basically what you're saying is $120 a barrel is the break -e is the point of e either up or down, and but with driving season coming, gas prices will be going up. So either way, it sounds to me like the consumer's screwed. Well, for a short time here, the, the thing that's exacerbating our problem, Tracy, is refineries. We need more refineries in the United States, and we've had a few shutdowns recently, particularly on the West Coast, but also in the Midwest. And that's where some of the cheaper oil is sourced, which comes from Canada, not overseas. So you're seeing people at the pump really start to get hit hard, particularly in these areas where we've seen some refinery shutdowns. Open anytime soon? Did I lose him? Keith, can you hear me? I hear you fine, Tracy. Is there any kind of talk that the refineries are going to open anytime soon? Have you heard? Well, what's happening around the West Coast and the Midwest is that usually there, when you have an accident, it's down for about 45 days, and that's kind of the general rule of thumb. So we're, we're still going to see some supply constraints from refineries in the Midwest and the West Coast for about another month. Okay, that being said, let's talk more about natural gas now. There's been a big push towards natural gas. As a matter of fact, we heard the other day we're going to have some pickup trucks on the road that are hybrid, natural gas, regular gasoline. Is natural gas the way to go here? It's starting. I think this is a thin edge of the wedge, and I think as the years move on, we're going to see more and more. You're seeing a lot of fleet trucks get put into natural gas, and we saw our first natural gas gas station in Louisiana open here just last week. So it's the thin edge of the wedge here, Tracy, and it's just going to get bigger. Is it the right way to go, though, too? I mean, as opposed to the electric, we've, we've seen what happened with the Chevy Volt. That's obviously not working, and I think it has a lot to do with the range anxiety of the consumer. Is natural gas a little bit more, uh, I don't know, compelling, I think, to people like me who drive a lot? It's very compelling because the switch over to gas is going to become easier and easier. You have aftermarket products that will allow you to switch from oil to gas, and you're just going to see more and more stations open over time, particularly in areas where there's big gas deposits. So I think that you are going to see this just pick up quite dramatically over the next five to ten years. So then we come back to you know the Keystone XL pipeline and things like that. Based on what you're saying, we really should allow that to happen, shouldn't we? I, I think to have more refineries in the United States is very important, and to have lower cost crude to the refineries on the East Coast is very important as well, because right now they're using uh, imported oil that's much more expensive, and you're seeing them close down. So I think this pipeline would be, make a big difference in allowing U.S. refineries to stay open. And really, the, the Americans cannot talk about true energy self-sufficiency without the refinery capacity to support it. Otherwise, it's just a balance sheet statement. Yes, we're energy sufficient. We have this many barrels coming in and this many barrels going out. But true energy self-sufficiency isn't possible without more refineries. How do you trade it then? Futures are down right now. Do you wait? Are you getting in right now as a trader? Well, right now, this is the top of the market seasonally. We're heading into shoulder season now, so I'm very hesitant to buy anything right now, particularly on the junior side where I spend a lot of my time. Once oil gets to about this level, it, it's kind of a lose-lose situation for juniors, and if oil prices go up, junior prices go down. If oil prices go down, junior prices go down. So what happens here is right now, for people who want to get into the market, 
uh, the, the super majors are really probably the best way to do that, the Exxons, the Chevrons, because what happens is, the Totals and the Shells, because what happens is above $125 a barrel, they are the only companies that really get any love from investors. But I, I think that that's going to actually have a pause for me. I think the, the, the oil price is going to pause here through the shoulder season. But as we get closer to May, that Memorial Day weekend that really kicks off the summer driving season, if it looks like we're going to be going above $125 a barrel, those are the stocks to own. Who are the juniors? Oh, the juniors would be, the, for example, the, the, the most played juniors in the market would be the baby Bakken. So the small companies that are developing land packages in the Bakken, like Triangle Petroleum, Northern Oil and Gas, Kodiak Oil and Gas. The big leader in that sector, Brigham, was bought out by Statoil, Norway's big company, late last year. So those are the players that our investors have been flocking to over the last two or three years. They've had great runs. They've had fantastic runs. But I really do believe that if oil goes over $125 a barrel, those stocks are going to get hit the hardest. And what about the natural gas world? Do you play the ETF or do you play the actual companies? You, you know what? I have to say I'm, I'm not a big fan of the ETFs, but so I always play the companies. And right now, the best thing I can say to investors on natural gas companies is just avoid them. Oh. Do not impale yourself on that trade. We just need to wait. I still think natural gas is going lower, and so I'm, I'm, I'm not even looking there yet. You know what? You're so straightforward. That's why I love having you on, Keith. Keith Schaefer, editor, publisher, Oil & Gas Investments Bulletin. The website is oilandgas-investment.com. Thank you for being with us, sir. Thanks, Trace.